What's going on YouTube? Dragonheart the Prince of Wales here and welcome to a video on my channel and I wasn't going to make a video on this but I did a late night channel update yesterday and I, I sort of went into it and I felt like I didn't really do um, my opinion justice in that video so I felt like it would be a good idea to upload a follow-up video where I talk about this for however long it takes just to try and get my point across. Now I'm not going to be posting a knee-jerk reaction type of video. It's not going to be a rant video. It's not going to be anything like that because I don't personally like those type of videos. I would rather do a video where I give a well-informed sort of opinion and also respect the opinions of other people as well. At the end of the day, with this topic that we're going to be going into today, we all have different opinions, right? We all have different opinions over pre-orders. We all have different opinions over Total War and Total War Warhammer and lots and lots of other stuff you know, within the gaming industry as far as kind of DLC goes. And, um, you know, I respect your opinions at the end of the day uh, as much as I'd like you to respect my opinion as well. I don't want to flame more. I don't want people just arguing for the sake of arguing. I don't want anything like that because I just think that's absolutely pointless. But anyway, what we're going to go into is, is also obviously um, introduce what this topic is. For those of you that uh, aren't aware what's happened, basically Creative Assembly... A couple of days ago, released a trailer, and it is for Total War Warhammer, and it announced the release date, which is the 28th of April 2016, which is uh, six months away. But also, they released um, a trailer portraying the Chaos Warriors. Chaos Warriors are going to be a pre-order bonus. So if you pre-order the game, you get the Chaos Warriors um, you know, as part of the game, basically. Obviously, it's six months until release it's going to be pe pe people are basically saying that uh it's cut content and it, you know it's kind of hard to argue against that as such as six months i personally think if they had i don't know announced that a month before release something like that then you wouldn't get people arguing people would, would be would actually be saying well this is good they've been working on this um and it it looks like they're going to have it just in time because obviously it's a month before release rather than six months. Six months before release does make it look like cut content. A month before release makes it look like they've been working on it. Do you see what I mean? It's all about perception and how you you see things. It's what you know. Five months difference makes a difference of people's opinion. You know that's why that's why I think anyway. Also, before we get into the depth of this, I'm going to be linking a bunch of videos in the description as well. That, that will be all it will be in the description. Just a bunch of videos. Many people. I've been talking about this topic. Many people have released videos. Uh, Lord Rexasaur has done. Angry Joe has. Arch Warhammer has. Reynolds Sanity has. Sanjetsu has. Um, Oakley from THFE Productions. They've all got different opinions. And like I said at the start, respect people's opinions. At the end of the day, we all have different kind of um, thought processes which goes into this kind of thing. And we all can't be the same. And that's the beautiful thing with the internet. So just respect people's opinions and obviously... Um, you know, at the end, they make your own opinion. That's what I'm trying to get get across in this video. No, no knee jerk reactions, no angry rants or anything like that. Just a a, a well informed kind of discussion. Basically, that's what we're gonna gonna have in this video. Uh, so yeah, um, people would have that kind of idea that it that it's cut content. Um, but Lord Rexog, he brought up a good point in his video, which a lot of people seem to have overlooked. Warhammer is going to cost a lot of money to make, as far as a developer is concerned. There are various different models in um, in the Total War franchise. With sort of Attila and Rome, people always used to say, oh, it's reskinning units, it's reskinning units, this isn't fair. And they brought up a good point as well. But with sort of Rome 2 or Attila, if we're using those two recent examples, as far as the unit models is concerned, you're basically reskinning um, a man into a different uniform, a different helmet, different outfit, different faction flag. The only time it really changed at all was if you involved animals such, such as the um, the the uh, war elephants or horses, you know, <laughs> or um, or those scorpion pot slingers which they had in Rome too. Anyone remember that? <laughs> but um, you know, in in Total War Warhammer, it's going to be different, obviously, because you've got you've got your your humans with the sort of sort of the empire, but you've also got like you've got griffins and and arch griffins and and um, demigriffs, you know, you've got your greenskins, you've got your vampire counts. 
you know, you've got your you've got your goblin suicide bombers, which I really like, by the way. Um, you've got all sorts of different creatures and animals and monsters um, within this game. With dwarves, obviously, the height difference is going to be different to humans and stuff. You know, you've got all these different things to create this universe of the Warhammer lore. It's going to require a hell of a lot of money, probably a lot more money than what you would need in a standard Total War historical setting. So let's get out there. That's that's what I think. I'm on board as far as, as that, as far as sort of Lord Rexor's thought process goes on in his video, because I agree, I think it's going to cost a lot of money. They need to make some of that money back. Now, how are they going to do that? Well, obviously, the price is going to be slightly different. I think uh, Rome 2 and Attila, it was £30 or £40. I think it was 40 actually. I, I've got a feeling I'm, I'm cutting it a bit low. I think it was £40 in, in UK currency. Total War Warhammer is 49.99, so it's £10 more. So straight away, obviously, it's going to be an increase uh, in the price, which if you're going to sit down and argue, fine. But I can see the kind of logic in that price difference. You know, I, they got to pay for it at the end of the day. Pre-order DLCs. Everyone's raging about it. People are saying, oh, you know, this is this is disgusting creative assembly. Shame on you, shame on you. Just like in the Total War trailer, last time I checked, it was, it was something like 2,000 likes and 11,000 dislikes. Oh, I'm so disenfranchised, blah, 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 blah. That kind of keyboard warrior mentality. That's what we what we had. Now, okay, it's, it's a bit of a shoddy thing to do. It really is scummy. But it's not new. This isn't a new thing. I mean, people are still raging about this now. This happened in in uh, the last game with Attila. We had the Viking Forefathers as a pre-order DLC. The game before that, Rome 2, we had um, the Greek States Culture Pack as a pre-order DLC. The game before that, Total War Shogun 2. This is back in 2011. We're talking four or five years ago now. Again, Hattori pre-order DLC. The last three games have had it. So why are people raging about it? Well, that's because it's announced six months before. I think personally, if it like like I said, if it was a month before, people would be arguing that oh, we finally we're going to get chaos. But because it's a month before, it's like whoa. And I, and I thought I wasn't going to play them. It it kind of how can I play? It plays in your emotions, right? So lots of people out there want to play as chaos, right? Um, they don't want to pay extra for them, obviously. They they might have resigned themselves to the fact that they got four playable races and they're going to be buying the game in in uh, April. And then come sort of uh, March next year, Creative Assembly announces, hey, actually, we've got a pre-order bonus here for you guys. Chaos. And everyone's like, oh, finally I get to play as Chaos. But no, because they've done six months previous, people are thinking, well, you've got in-game trailers, you're showing footage of Chaos warriors um, and units and stuff in the, in this trailer because that's what that's what they've done basically uh, you're saying it's going to be there to play on release which is not until six months time why is it a pre-order bonus when it's when it's apparently one of the core cultures now i'm no warhammer expert so you may have to correct me with that but as far as i'm aware chaos are one of the core sort of groups one of the core factions races in in warhammer law same as sort of Skaven, which are obviously not in this one, uh, Bretonia, which are not in this one as well, and, and a few others, because like I said, are not not up with the kind of Warhammer law. Um, but you've got your four king, you got your four kind of core races, and then obviously you've got uh, this this pre-order pre-order DLC. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite it's quite difficult to, to dissect. You've got so many different opinions, but like I said. I agree it's going to cost a lot of money. they got to make their money back somehow. Pre-order bonuses aren't nothing new. Now, Angry Joe, in his video, brought up a decent point as well. So this is kind of the counter-argument, the, the, the other side of the coin, basically. Angry Joe said in his um, video that um, uh, Deus Ex, people were given a shoddy deal with that. They they spoke their minds. They spoke to the developers. They they disliked things, downvoted things, emailed things, tweeted things, etc., etc., and eventually they got a better deal for themselves. And that's where sort of consumerism comes into it, and where you know you as a as a consumer can can make a difference. Basically, if you disagree with pre-orders, if you disagree with uh, DLC, then the obvious thing to do to counter that is to not buy DLC and to not 
pre-order games. Total Biscuits is a big advocate of this. Total Biscuit is somebody that I really respect in the game industry. He always gives his honest opinion um, in his videos. Uh, I sometimes watch the Co-Optional podcast. Um, he's released loads of videos in the past about pre-orders. He even released his own t-shirt that says, um, we do not pre-order, which was like a mock thing to one of the Game of Thrones houses, which I thought was quite funny. But, you know, he's got a point. If you dislike it, just don't do it. You know, I'm a massive fan of the Assassin's Creed franchise. I, it's well documented on my channel that I am. I hold my hands up. I'm an Assassin's Creed fan. Played all the games. Bought Unity last year and I thought it was one of the worst games in the franchise ever. It was shoddy. It was broken on release. It was hours and hours worth of patching. Waiting for it to download. Getting really impatient. Getting really angry. Almost rage worthy. Didn't play it for a few months. Went back to it. It was still shit. The story was crap. Everything was crap. It, okay? I liked all the other Assassin's Creed, but this one was just the worst. I didn't pre-order Assassin's Creed Syndicate this year. I waited and waited and waited until literally two days before release day in the UK until I actually did pre-order. What I did, I waited for all the reviews to start coming in. I waited to watch the first few hours of gameplay on YouTube by some of the YouTubers I trust. And I made a well-informed sort of opinion on whether I should buy it or not this year. I bought it, played the first few hours, I'm loving it so far. And so far, I feel like I made a good choice. And that's the sort of logic that we got to bring into the way we we buy games. If we don't pre-order, right? Because this is, this, is, this is now going out to the people who are against the, the, the DLC and the pre-order kind of news that we've had recently with Total War Warhammer. If you are against it and you want to make a point, don't pre-order it. It's as simple as that, like Total Biscuit has said, like like many others have said in the past. What you got to do, you don't pre-order. You wait until like a week, a few days before release, and then you 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 see where it goes from there. You, the reviews start to come in. People who have early access to this um, and, and do reviews, the people, the reviewers that you trust, you you go to them, you find out. You you talk to people who you trust in the industry. You see what they got to say. You watch um, some early. Um, access trailers, um, trailers, gameplay, um, previews and stuff, you, you make an, an, uh, an informed decision. I mean, what you could do, you could pre-order, you could play, say, the first two hours, and this is actually a point now, if you look in the links in the description, there's a video from Arch Warhammer, I'm going to link that one as well. Um, he brought up a good point about um, the Steam refund system, where you could you could do that. You could look at all the reviews and previews beforehand. You could then pre-purchase, so you pre-order, so you get the Chaos um, DLC without having to pay an extra six ninety nine, seven ninety nine, wherever the price uh, may be. You then would um, you then play the game. You you got two hours which you can play. So you, you've got this, you've got this two hours. Put my fingers up to, but you got your two hours which you can play before you you you, you kind of. Um, that kind of block, a two-hour block, is why you can refund on Steam within a 14-day period. So what you could do, you could pre-order it. You could check out all the reviews, early gameplay and stuff, people's Let's Plays, if people are going to do because people will be doing Let's Plays, obviously. The the more uh, well-known YouTubers um, on YouTube will be doing uh, Let's Plays and stuff on it. They always do. Um, you, you check out the reviews. In that 14-day period, you've got two hours to play with it. And then after that two-hour period, you can then refund it on Steam if you're still unsatisfied with the product that you've got and you get your money back. Now, obviously, many pros and cons with that argument. We don't quite know how this is going to work out just yet. I mean, Total War is quite a complex game anyway. I think you need a lot more than two hours to get into it. You could be a massive Warhammer fan, right? And this could be the game that you've wanted for your lifetime, okay? I'm just going to put that out there. You could, you could have been waiting years to play this. It comes along Total War Warhammer, one of the best in real-time strategy, one of the best in fantasy lore, coming together for this game. And, you know, you, you want to play it, obviously, and then in two hours, because you're not familiar with Total War, or maybe it's the other way around, you're not familiar with Warhammer, like I am, then you're trying to work things out. And you're trying to um, learn this game. You're going to need a lot more than two hours. I mean, the tutorial will probably take up half hour or so anyway. They, they usually do. So... It's going to be um, a lot more than that. So the Steam thing, in this in this scenario, in this instance, it might not be the perfect kind of thing to do as a consumer, but the option's there. At least you've got the option. You didn't used to do a Steam, but now you do. 
and you can really hurt a developer like that if you if you if a lot of people did it for example if if you had say i don't know i don't know quite know what, what the sales figures are for rome 2 i know it's quite high same with attila uh, i think rome i've told, I've told attila by quite a lot actually but if you okay we'll get, okay i'll just round off to a figure say you're a million people and say 500,000 of that a mil, that million people waited until sort of the last few days to pre-order and say most of them were unsatisfied and did a, the whole steam refund thing out of that kind of sale percentage creative assembly have lost like nearly half i'm just using this as a rough figure don't go by any, by any kind of pro proper figures or anything but they they're going to lose half that profit do you see what i mean and then that's when they turn around and say actually our policy from this um this kind of social campaign this um releasing sort of campaign of warhammer a marketing campaign that's what i want this marketing campaign didn't actually work we need to rethink how we do things for the future now that then they do the next game which we don't know what's going to be it could be medieval 3 it could be a total war pardon me it could be total war china it could be it could be anything we, we just don't know but then they could rethink the strategy and then they could release a really good game the next time around unfortunately it takes this game to, to, to do that like it did with Rome 2 and Attila previous. I mean, that's the other thing as well. Okay, guys, we had a quick uh, jump cut there. Um, basically, the point I was going to make is the whole trust issue. Um, Creative Assembly have lost quite a lot of trust with the fan base down the years. If you take your minds back to 2013, September 2013, when Rome 2 was released, it was the game which the whole Total War fan base has waited almost a decade for. It was going to be the sequel to the most loved game in the franchise. It had the promise of all these different factions, of all this this massive kind of world map, something they hadn't done really um, as far as a you know, large scale. More units, more diverse units, better graphics, the whole thing was going to be so much better. And obviously, um, it had a, a terrible launch, very shoddy. It had 17, 18 um, patches over the course of about 18 months. It had some free LC, it had lots of DLC. You had you take your mind back to sort of the the, the animals pack they had, which was terrible. Um, you had like the, the scorpion pot thing. I mean, they're trying to make many other things like that, which people just ranted and raved about because it just wasn't worthwhile. In my opinion, it wasn't worthwhile. But they had um, like Wrath of Sparta, Hand About the Gate, Caesar and Go. And people rant and rave about sort of DLC and stuff. But like, I bought I bought Hand About the Gates and that was pretty good. That was one of the better DLCs. I bought Caesar and Go, that was pretty good as well. I didn't bother with Wrath of Sparta. So what does that make me? Well, it, for one, I didn't buy Wrath of Sparta because I did a bit of research beforehand and I saw that it was going to be pretty much the same thing that came previously. And because it's my money and because I'm smart enough to make my own decisions, I decided not to purchase it. Now, does that mean I miss out? Well, I'm not missing anything out. I'm not missing anything out because I don't want to play it. If I was somebody that really wanted to get to, to play it but didn't have it, then I would I would be missing out. But because I didn't go for it, I didn't miss anything at all and that's the point that people need to kind of you know think of because at the end of the day it's people's money some people are happy to pay 100 pounds 150 pounds or more to buy the the high king edition whatever, whatever price is going to be the high king edition of total war warham and that's great if they want to buy a special edition and have loads of um unique stuff with that pack you know it could be um it could be like a warhammer figurine it could be um it could be special artwork it could be a soundtrack pardon me it could be you know whatever's included in the pack you know then it then great go for it i myself personally i'm not going to be i'm not going to be going for any special editions um i haven't pre-ordered yet i don't think i will pre-order until much nearer the time until we know a lot more i know that creative assembly have actually come out and said from now up until sort of release there's going to be a lot more news filtering through throughout the months and the weeks they're going to be announcing more free content free lc that they're going to have planned there might be one or two more dlcs before then we don't know but until i know more and i got more of the bigger picture i'm not going to just do anything because i, I don't feel need to pre-order i i'm somebody now who's got the opinion that i don't need to pre-order games anymore i did exactly the same thing with witcher 3 i didn't i didn't pre-order witcher 3 until like a day before it was well actually no i didn't pre-order witcher 3 until like an hour before it was due to release on steam and then i just sort of pre-ordered it there and then it's like it hasn't been released yet i'm pre-ordering it now and um that game hasn't disappointed but you know i always wait until near the end well i'm starting to wait until near the end till i make my decisions um i know i just i didn't quite finish off that top that point then about the the uh, trust thing but yeah rome 2 had a, a bad release the trust thing 
um, people just lost trust with the company through through the practices they used in that in that kind of campaign. Total War Tiller, the same sort of thing happened. There, there were lots of bugs and stuff in Total War Tiller, which um, never got corrected. Like the way units would would shift around in like a like they're on roller skates or something, even though you've, you've got them in a in a defensive shield wall sort of formation where they're supposed to be rigid and strong. They're holding their shield up against the gate to try and stop people coming in. I know I, I saw that on one of my campaigns, men would sort of slide past <laughs> like they're on roller skates and stuff like that, you know, it's stuff that they sort of need to need to address, obviously, because they, you know, they can't really afford, certainly now they can't afford to have stuff like that um, in in Total War Warhammer because it will just, it will just, it will just mess up a lot of people's opinions of the game, and people won't be won't be sort of giving it a, a good positive opinion. Because what Total War Tiller did, it kind of, it it wasn't a bad game. It had lots of positives and had some decent reviews. It wasn't the highlight of the franchise by any means, but it started to build bridges from the community. They started to do quite a lot of things right. Stuff which was was taken out of the past game was brought back in, and it was it's nice that you know. The CA listened, and that's why I was going, you know, going back to my point about Sega. I think Sega are the main kind of villains in this, if there is a villain. Um, and the Creative Assembly, unfortunately, they're the people that are sort of stuck right in the middle of all of it. But anyway, guys, I'm going to probably wrap up this video now. Um, let me know your thoughts and opinions um, in the comment section below. I'd be very grateful to hear them. Um, obviously, don't rage. There's no point having knee-jerk reactions. If, if anybody need, does like a knee-jerk reaction in the comment section below, I'm just going to delete the comment because I, I just don't see the need of it. I just want well-informed discussions, maybe some evidence to back it up, and then we'll just take it from there. We'll probably talk more about this now in the next um, podcast episode. It will probably be in a week or two's time. need to wait on Lord Rex and Stiff to uh, to finish the university work because I know they they've been quite busy this week. Uh, last week we didn't have one. Um, I wasn't feeling hundred percent to be honest with you. I know Lord Rex or so wasn't feeling well either. Uh, I think Stifter was working last week as well on on his work. So it's been a bit been a bit of a, been a bit of a break the last few weeks over the podcast. But we will definitely be talking about this in the next podcast. And it'll be interesting to get everybody's opinions together and see where we all stand with the whole thing anyway guys this has been my video you won't, you won't hear me now talk about warhammer until the next podcast because i don't personally like doing these videos these type of videos I'd, I'd rather just kind of do the important thing and just game because that's what i'm here to do i'm here to game not to to be some sort of dictator with his opinions but i wanted to get my opinion across anyway because it's been such a fallout and because it's been a sort of a special circumstance i'll make a video like this anyway guys i've been dragon half the prince of wales thank you for watching until next time goodbye